here we go. Right, so you and I have been six months now, right? So beginning of February, we went through, you know, the whole spring season, the whole summer season. We're kind of getting to know each other. I'm getting to know kind of how you work. You're getting to know how I work. And, and, and we've been working on some of the things that have been concerns for you. And we've been focused in on some of the things that you do well, right? We've gone over these goal sheets. We've gone over the fact that we want to play college ball. We've gone over the fact that, you know, we want to be locked in. We want to be engaged. We want to be the best person we can be, you know, physically, emotionally, spiritually, athletically, academically. We've agreed that O's locked in, family's locked in. So here we are. It's time to take it to that next level. Right. It's time to engage. It's time to get things really like it's time to stop talking and start to put into action. Right. It's time to really up the workouts. It's time to up, you know, the lifting. It's time to up the running. It's time to up becoming an athlete. Right. It's time to up the academics. We've started our fir first day of school today or at, what, is that right? Monday. Monday. OK, so how's the school week going? How's high school life treating you so far? It was kind of scary at first, but it's actually not that bad. Okay, what was scary? What? Sorry. What was scary? Oh, like, I didn't know where any of my classes were, so I was stressing out. All right, talk to me about your classes. Um, I have AP Biology. Okay. I like it. It, like, she makes it seem very difficult, so I'm kind of scared, but okay. I'll do great. I know you will. I have AP Geography, which I'm really excited about. Okay. Um, and then I have health. What's next? Oh, and then I have geometry. Okay. No and AP then, geometry. No. <laughs> I'm not, not a math person math. either. No, I'm not a math person either. Don't feel bad about it. Nothing um, wrong with that at all. And then I have English, and then I go to psychology, which I love psychology. So. Hey. Listen, I've got my bachelor's degree in, in uh, psychology. My master's degree is in uh, youth policy and studying. So cool. All right. So we're getting adjusted to high school. We're two days in now. Is that right? You know, we've had yesterday and today. Uh, obviously, still a lot to go on, a lot to do, right? But high school is important, right? You only get four more years to be a kid, right? And then you become an adult, right? So you want to stay young as long as you can, stay engaged as long as you can. Get involved in high school, right? Because there's so much that you could do there, right? Like for, for your life's just been kind of school and softball, school and softball, school and softball. Well, now, you know, it can still be school and softball, but in school, right, there's opportunities to play, you know, other sports. I mean, listen, you're trying out for the cheer team in a couple of weeks, right? That's not happening. We decided no. against that. No. Oh, come on. I'm doing HOSA, though. I'm sorry, what? Like health. It's like health stuff. I don't know what I've never heard of that. Is that a sport? No, it's like, it's a club for like medical and stuff. Oh, okay, cool. Right. All right. So you get to do that, right? So you get to learn. So that goes hand in hand kind of with your psychology stuff, right? Right. Yeah. So you learn that and then you go to, all right, is that your goal to do medical stuff? I want to be a sports psychologist. Okay. Yeah. Man, me too. <laughs> cool. Well, maybe one day we'll work together, oh? More than more than just teacher and student. That'll be cool. All right. Well, listen, very good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just show you. We're going to go over kind of like a get locked in, get focused. We're going to talk about kind of your position stuff, your workout stuff, kind of where we're going, what we need to do, how we can really just turn it up, right? Because... We've got to this point now, you know, it's still two years away before we got to worry about scholarships and people giving us offers and all of that. But between now and then we're going to do everything that we can to absolutely maximize that. So do you know, and you can ask mom and dad if they've sent your stuff over for your website right now, we're trying to get everybody's websites created. We've sent some emails out, but I think they go to you. So don't look at them because I think the emails go to you because you're the only email address that I have. So if you're getting that stuff, then you have to forward it to them because I need videos. I need a bio done. Like, so check your emails uh, from me and from uh, Toucan Marketing, 
right? Because there's some, there's some emails in there and a form that you got to fill out so that we can get your website built. I really want all of these done by the middle to end of September so that by the time we start going to these fall recruiting tournaments, we can now share a website. We can now stand out. We can now do what we've been working on and, and stand out amongst the crowd. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. check those emails, follow up with, I'm going to follow up with you tomorrow. Make sure you forward that, that stuff to mom and dad so that we can get that stuff start to being built for you. Okay. Okay. All right. So I am going to go to a screen share. I'm going to pull this up. Booyah. So there we are. Now I want this. Hold on. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute because I want you, 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 speaker, gallery. Yes. I want the gallery view. And then I want you in, and then I want me in. Now I want to screen share, screen share, share. All right, cool. There's you, there's me, there it is. So catcher, you're a catcher, right? Isn't that what Olivia Lewis is doing, right? You, you are now, um, you know, focusing specifically on that third base, right? Some of that infield stuff and really wherever they need you, right? Because I know you can play a good outfield. I know you can play, you know, a good middle if you need to. But catching at third is kind of where primarily catching is where we're really going to focus, right? The pop time, uh, our throwdowns, our snap throws, our framing. We really want to start to become that next level elite level catching every time you go to a catching lesson you're not just there you're there with intent what is my goal for this lesson how do i put in maximum effort how do i stay focused and engaged right and if you can't stay in it for 30 minutes where you're truly focused and engaged tell your coach that hey let's go hard for 15 minutes and then i need a five minute break to recoup and then i want to go hard for 15 minutes again right i was talking to rue the other day and she says she has a hard time you know, just really staying in for 30 minutes on a lesson. I'm like, well, okay, we'll break it up, right? Break it up into smaller pieces. That way, when you're in those smaller pieces, you are really, really focused and engaged in that part, right? So you know this, right? As a catcher, you're the backbone of the team. You're the field general. Your job is to see everything, right? Your job is to have command. You have to have the loudest voice on the field, one of the greatest pictures that I've seen of you so far that I posted a couple times is where you're jumping up, you know, really tall, grabbing that ball. And then the other one, when you're on that knee and you've got hands back and, and you're getting ready to lace that ball down the line, right? So really having that command presence, that command voice, right? You are that field general. You have to become a student of the game, oh. You understand what I'm saying? You got to have eye, you got to have enough wherewithal to know when that girl is rounding the base to get the ball, to know where everything is going on and be able to control that play. And you have to have enough gumption to be able to hold your team accountable when they do something wrong, right? Or if they don't hit a cut or if they miss a spot, right? You have to have enough compassion and enough motivation to walk out to your pitcher when she's having a hard time and not doing well and be able to know when she needs to be told everything's okay and when she needs to be told to get her stuff together, because right now she's not locked in and focused herself, right? So being a catcher really requires a lot of personality, a lot of drive, a lot of just all of that, right? Which is why I think you love doing it, because you, you have all of those tools, right? So catching demands sharp instincts, unwavering focus, strong leadership, right? You have to be that team leader. Like I said, you got to be able to tell third base. Hey, move up. I need you up on a bunk. You got to be able to walk and control your picture. You got to be able to bring everybody together, right? You got to be a wall back there, a pass ball. And you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of stress and priority and goals and a lot of great reward and a lot of bruising and fun and good things and bad things and stuff that nobody ever talks about in this position, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to try to set clear goals, fine tune your skills and prepare you mentally and physically for what's about to come. Because, I mean, really think about it. You are competing with everybody in the class of 2028 as a catcher that's going for a scholarship to go where you want to go and do what it is you want to do right now, right? So, so we have to get locked in. So as a catcher, just catching, right? Now, what do you think? 
three goals for this season in the catching department would you for me? Give me a second. I got to go grab a pen. I can't write nothing down without a pen. And I forgot. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Perfect. Guess who's back? All right, so three goals for the season as a catcher. And I emailed you this as well, right? So um, if you if you can print it out, you can print it out. If not, just take notes, and then you just got it for your reference later. No big deal. And if I ever send you one of these sheets and, like, you're confused or you don't know how to answer it the right way, like, don't stress yourself out. Like, call me, come to the group, we'll go over it. Like, one of the kids spent – a couple hours, like stressing themselves out over, like there's no grade on this. This is literally to stop stress, not cause it. You know what I'm saying? All right. So what top three goals as a catcher? What would you say your top three goals? I, I know number one, right? Number one is pop time. We've already discussed that. Okay. So number two, what would you say number two would be for you as a good catching goal? Um, to improve my framing, like especially on change-ups. Framing on change-ups. I love that specific. Okay, number three. Um, probably my blocking. Okay, blocking. So I want to get better at pop time. I want to get better at framing, specifically on the change. And I want to get better at blocking. Now, which goal do you think will help you most impact your team if you improve it? Out of the three, pop time, framing, or blocking, which would help your team the most? Um, maybe, probably blocking. Okay, you think blocking? All right, why'd you pick that one? Because it can save a lot of, like, runners that score or runners that, like, steal bases. Okay, I like it. I like it, right? I would have went with framing, right? Because because if I, if I can get my pitcher extra strikes, I alleviate that. But you, your mind, you might be a great framer and not, not need help with framing, right? That might, might be why you went to blocking. So blocking, so... What do you feel about blocking for you needs to improve? Is it side to side? Is it up to down? Is it is it on specific pitches? Where do you feel you need the most improvements? Probably like blocking a drop ball. Okay. Coming from a drop ball pitcher, right? Yeah. Okay. Very good. So anticipating that, right? Because if she misses, I got to be able to handle a couple of different bounces. If she misses with spin, I got to anticipate the direction the ball is going to go in when it hits the ground, right? There's a lot of moving parts, right? And then if I've got a runner on base, I my, my natural instinct is to want to pay attention to them, take my eyes off the ball, and now it bounces behind me, and they're on third. Well, Dad, that didn't go the way we planned it, right? Right. So I, I love it, right? Blocking is certainly an essential and important skill. So Write that down, right? So that when you go to your lessons, right? When you talk to your catching coach, right? These are my goals. I want to work on my pop time. So how do we achieve an increased pop time, right? That's going to come again with DNA and maturity, getting older, getting stronger, my fast twitch muscles getting more mature, being in the gym, working on those specific arm, back, leg, torso, you know, thigh, glute, uh, everything around the things that requires that transfer of power to be able to get that. And then worrying about specific hand skills and receiving that ball and getting everything back to the position that we need it to, right? And then on framing, right, that's specific handwork, right? That's knowing how to anticipate the pitch and not always just turning the hand. Sometimes the way that your body is positioned based off the way that the ball is coming in, knowing how the umpire is lined up behind you, what their angle and what their vision is, what they've been calling, how to adjust to what they like. Because sometimes you might be here on a frame, but if you just move it a quarter of an inch, that's where they like it. And now if you put the ball right there, you increase your, your strike count percentage, you know, by X, Y, or Z. So, you know, all of those factors go into – playing and and achieving these different goals that you have for yourself and then of course blocking that just comes with knowing the pitch knowing your catcher knowing what her weaknesses are right because you could be a perfect blocker but if your pitcher throws the ball nine feet out to the left hard to block that right that's more in line with a wild pitch or something like that right so cool 
let's keep going. So if I said to you, oh, I want you to go all in this year, right? Like all in, like I'm not even playing. Like, like this is it. Like mindset, body, soul, everything, right? Academics, athletics, I'm going all in as a catcher. What does that mean to you? What do you, what is happening in your mind when I say, I want you to go all in? Um, like when I'm on that field, like I'm stopping every ball, I'm throwing every kid out. Like if a ball gets thrown home and it's like 10 feet above my head, I'll jump 10 feet to get that ball. Ha, like, been there, done that, right? Yeah, do anything you can to like stop the ball or anything to help your team. Yeah, right. So I want you to understand it means effort, right? It's not results, right? I don't care if you throw every kid out. Right. I don't care if you are perfect and, and, and yeah, I don't. Right. As long as your effort is all in, as long as I know that when O is in the lineup, like she's locked in, she's engaged. She's given me absolutely every single piece of mental, physical and emotional commitment that she can give me right now. She is 100 percent all in when she's playing. She's engaged when she's throwing. She's engaged when she's in the dugout. She's looking. She's observing. She's trying to be better every single play when she's in her workouts outside of the game she's engaged when she's in the classroom she's focused she doesn't have her phone out she's not doing any of this stuff right now when we talk about specifically for catching it starts in your mind that when you get out of the car for lessons this is it this is the best practice i'm ever going to have right and then the next one after that is because each time you should be setting a bar and a standard because that's the only way we achieve our goals is by getting better and giving that intense effort. So when I say I want you to go all in as a catcher, like I want you to not be happy with, oh, okay, we'll get that next time. Or, okay, that was close enough. Okay, I almost had that, right? I want the effort to where when you're in practice, that ball is making it to second base on a dot, right? And I'm getting it every single time until it does, right? I may have told you this. I shared it with somebody. I know when I was a young kid about your age, right? I didn't play a lot of travel sports, but I wanted to create discipline. And on the basketball court, there's there's a circle. There's a bottom of the key. There's a free throw line. And then there's a three-point line. And I literally, we didn't have nothing. I was I lived in an apartment complex and had a, had a basketball court. And I would literally stay out there for hours. And until I hit 10 in a row, you know how many times I got mad, oh, and I hit nine. And then that 10th one I missed, because I had to start over because my standard was 10 and I wasn't moving until the free throw line until I got 10 from the bottom of the key. And then that was over. I did that. Right. And then I go to the free throw line. Now I got to hit 10. Now I go to the three point line. I got to hit 10. Sometimes I was out there for five, six, seven hours. I don't care. That's the standard. Right. I'm not expecting you to be out there for six hours throwing, you know, uh, throwing down the second base. But what I'm saying is good enough isn't good enough anymore. We've got to achieve and keep pushing towards these targeted goals that we set for ourselves while still having fun, while still taking breaks, while still doing things so that we don't get burnt out. But we have to maximize our opportunity from today forward by turning it up and going all in. Does that make sense? Yeah. You think I'm crazy? No. A little bit, maybe. Because I, mean, I think you can – go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. It's all good. You're trying to all play right. basketball. You're a bit short, but it's okay. Oh, wow. Wow. Maybe that's why it was hard to get 10 in a row. Uh oh That's all right. I can take it. And my last name's Hoops. I got the name, not the game. You know what I'm saying? What do you want me to do? That's all right. I can be, I, I can take it. Oh, it's no problem. All right. So number two, focus point, refining your process. Look, at least we can have fun, right? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to identify one aspect of your catching that you think needs the most refinement. We talked about blocking. So here, framing pitches, blocking balls, throwing accuracy, game management, communication with pitchers. So if I were to say you need, you mentioned needing help with framing pitches, where would you say, you need help on the framing part. Is it understanding when to frame, how to frame? What, what do you think you struggle with the most? The drop balls. Okay. Right. So bringing that up. Yeah. Right. Having that risk control to not make it look so obvious. Yeah. 
All right. Very good. Right. So at blocking, right. What, where do you think you block? Well, cause you said blocking was you, what you needed to improve the most. Right. But, but what if in our mindset, everything that we did was great. Yes. I know we need improvement, but I can, I can, I can approach it with the mindset of I'm already great at something. Right. Instead of telling myself, well, oh, this is no good or that's no good because then as soon as we don't do it, see, I told you I'm no good at that, right? So if we can change that mindset to where we are good but still working, tell me of what you do on blocking well. I think like, I think it's in my head, like, because I block fastballs and changeups good, but when it comes to draw balls, I think it's just in my head that like, I don't know. Are you scared, scared? As soon as they call drop, are you like, uh-oh. Okay, that's fair, right? All right, because you, you don't know what's going to happen. There's a lot of pressure, especially if there's a runner on base, right? Like you want to look over at the coach and be like, hey, man, you know, somebody on base, you sure you want to call a drop ball, right? But he's got to be able to trust the pitcher, just like you got to be able to trust the pitcher, right? And, you know, so that just comes with confidence and understanding the pitcher yourself, uh, fielding enough of them, stopping enough of them, anticipating the spin, if it falls early and doesn't quite make it to you. What about throwing accuracy? Do you have a laser? Are you able to snap throw first, second, third pretty efficiently without having any issues? Yeah, I feel like my accuracy is pretty good. Okay, very good, right? So so first base, somebody's on first, and and they get a good jump, or you think they're going to go, you've, you've got a good lace to be able to laser them down, got that good communication with your first and third baseman. Very good. How about game management? Do you know when to call timeout, how to call timeout? Have you ever just on your own called the timeout and went and talked to your pitcher without the coach calling it or telling it, telling you? Yeah, I feel like it's knowing the pitcher and like when they, you can tell they're like a little bit like down of what's happening. So like, especially with Rue, we talked a lot. So I knew when I would need to do that and it helped a lot. You and her had good chemistry, right? You were on the same page, you knew her pitches. She knew kind of where you were going to be. You knew just from the sight of her eyes or, or maybe just the way she, you know, flicked her hair or touched her face, I mean, whatever, right? You get to know somebody and you know, like, okay, how about just game management in general, right? Knowing, you know, okay, everything's, everybody's getting a little too anxious, right? Here's a big play. I got to pull everybody together, kind of tell everybody to take a deep breath. We know what we're doing. We've been in this situation before. Do you feel like you're good with the game management portion of it outside of, you know, again, getting direction from a coach? Can you feel the vibe of the game? And do you have enough confidence to be able to kind of pull everybody together, set the tone, reset everyone in order to get everybody moving in the right direction? Yeah, I feel like I'm good at that because, like, we pretty much all got along. So, like, if we had to do that, we'd all listen to what we had to say and just, like, stay confident through the play. Got it. And then communication with pitchers, we kind of beat that up, right? You you have good relationships with your pitchers. Uh, you know how to talk to them. You know kind of that that they can be emotional and there's a lot riding on their shoulders and and that they need, you know, some sometimes a little bit of extra attention. So uh, we talked about specific steps to refine some of these things that you're working on. Uh, and it's just repetition, right? It's taking a practice plan to your practice. Right. It's it's taking that extra energy. It's taking that extra effort and it's getting those extra reps. Again, it's like this isn't good enough. I'm not settling for what I'm putting out today. I'm showing up and I'm getting better today. And tomorrow when I come in, this is the standard. And the next day when I come in, this is the standard. And then this is the and that's just how it keeps escalating. And that's how you become better, more confident, self-secure, better leader, better developer. Uh, and we have, again, I never say that you're not going to have that down, right? We're, we're going to have that down. Even me, I have these down days, right? But it's being able to say, hey, I trust in myself. I rely on my training. I understand this is just temporary. None of this is going to hold me back. And I'm going to continue to trust in the training that I've got behind me in order to pull myself out and move forward. The quicker we can identify those things, the less time we have down in the lull. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect. What distractions have hindered your focus in the past? How have you not been able to make performance in the past? Um, maybe like not believing in myself or like 
not believing that the ball like comes to me, I'll make the play. Yeah, I would agree with that, right? Because you're trying, oh, right? You're trying your butt off, right? You're sitting in that dugout, you're like, yes, girl, this is the time they told me that I've got to be positive. I've got to be strong. And at the end of the day, you just want to go, whatever, this sucks, <laughs> right? And I get it, but this is the first step because six months ago, all you would have said to yourself is this sucks, right? And I'm no good and this isn't fun and blah, 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 right? And, and now you don't realize it, but even though you're still not perfect in the game, which you never will be, right? At least you have the tools now to where these lulls, they're bouncing back a little quicker, right? And we can make some adjustments. Look, sometimes you have to make adjustments in order to get to where you want. If you want to hit the ball, what do they tell you you need to do? Make what? Contact. You got to make contact. You got to make adjustments, right? If you want to get better grades, you got to make adjustments. If you want to, you know, have a better workout, you have to make adjustments. So we've made some adjustments for you, right? You have some different things that you're working on. So some of those distractions and hindrance now uh, should be gone. How are we going to eliminate this, eliminate them this season? We're going to continue to do this, right? We're going to work. We're going to talk. We're going to share. We're going to understand that internally, uh, you know, we're great. Right. Look, guess what? You might still just hit 300 this season. You might hit 450. That all depends on the pitcher, the catcher, the hitter, and the throw. It depends on the wind, the rain. It depends on a lot of different things. Right. But all you can control is your focus to limit your distractions, to be able to stay engaged, to maximize opportunity for you so that you can find a quality pitch that you can drive, get on base help your team by scoring runs like the little thumbs up there. All right, cool. Turning it up, evaluating your performance, describe what turning it up looks like in your daily preparation as a catcher. So only, you know, your routine right now, if I were to say, Oh, I need you to turn it up. It is time to get too legit to quit. It is time to get crumb. It is time to take. O to capital O ha, capital O. There you go. Right. It's time to really like just turn Olivia Lewis into not just a catcher, not just a softball player, but an elite level athlete that is ready to take on anything that comes her way. Doesn't that sound just flipping amazing? I'm Olivia Lewis, an elite level athlete that's ready to take on anything that comes my way. Could you say that? I'm Wait. Olivia Lewis. I'm Olivia, I'm Olivia Lewis. Lewis. I'm an elite level athlete ready to take on anything that comes my way. Yeah. That part. Right. Right. But again, like if you can't say it, how can you believe it? Right. Right. You, you understand what I'm saying? So internally, yeah. this is where we have to turn it up. So tell me based off your current routine right now, if I were to say, give me more and turn it up, what does that look like? Um, probably. Like listening to my music and then talking to my pitcher. Mm -hmm. I feel mm -hmm. like I don't I'm, really have anything that like. Listen, I'm talking about your daily preparation, your work, your workouts, your lessons, mm -hmm. your training, right? Your daily preparation to be the baddest catcher on the block, right? So tell me how you. Because yesterday we were talking or day before and you were getting in a car and you were driving somewhere to go to a lesson, right? Now I'm saying if you were going to that same lesson and I said, oh, I need you to turn it up. I don't want you just going to a lesson. I need you to turn it up, right? Like, what does that look like? What is that? Is that what does that look like for you? Um, listen to my music. Yeah. It's yeah. like on the way there, focus on what I need to work on and yeah. like lock in in the lesson and really focus on everything I've been needing to work on. Yeah. Just give it everything you got, right. That when you leave out of there, you're sweating, you're drained, you're mentally wore out. Like you just had it. You're done. It's over. It's a wrap. There ain't nothing more that I can give. My hands are blistered. My arms are tired. My head is shaking. Like all I want to do is go home, get a shower, ice up, get something to eat and go to bed because I'm spent. I need that. I need that, right? That's where we're going, right? Because if your goals and dreams are your goals and dreams, then they're not waiting for anybody. You understand what I'm saying? They're not waiting for anybody. And we're not waiting for them to get to us. We're getting ready to get up. This is a dog fight and we're going to get it. 
Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> All right, cool. So what will you do differently this season to ensure you're consistently leading and performing your best? Um, probably like talk, talking to myself, like making sure I believe in all the work I've put in, like talking to my teammates more often, like to make sure they believe in themselves. I believe in myself. So we trust each other on the field and off the field. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Right. And I want your workouts to be harder. And I want your throwing sessions to be more focused. And I want your hitting sessions sessions to be more locked in and laser. I want my boys going through every single one of your lessons saying, turn it up, turn it up. I'm buying you a shirt that says, turn it up. You understand what it's going to be? Lead your journey and on the back. It's going to say, turn it up. I'm telling you it's coming, right? Because that's where we're going, right? That's what we got to do. In order to be who we say we want to be, we can't just talk about it. We can't just think about it. We have to physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually engage and go do it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. So how do we do it? List three habits that will keep you sharp and motivated throughout the season. What are three things that you can do daily, weekly, monthly to stay engaged in your season? Um, work out every day. Okay. Um, maybe like journal everything I do every day for softball. Love it. And talk to my teammates every day. Okay. Okay. Talk to my teammates. Yes, ma'am. Talk to my teammates. Okay. So work out every day. Yes. Right. But don't just go to the gym, like work out. Right. Like if, if I'm doing 30 sit-ups, I want 50. If I'm doing 10 push-ups, I want 20. Right. I need to increase now safely. Right. We're not just going to go, oh, coach Bill said, go work out. Uh, right. I want to be safe. I want to be smart. I want to follow and listen to my body. Right. I need plenty of rest. Right now, as you're increasing the workouts, I need plenty of nutrition. I need plenty of water. I need plenty of hydration because as we increase the intensity, we have to increase the fuel. We have to increase the hydration. Otherwise, you're going to be tired, lethargic, cramped, and all those other things. Right. So I want you to build good habits, work out. But in that workout, that workout also includes rest, nutrition, hydration. It's the total body package of taking care of myself. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. The next habit, journaling. I love this, right? Somebody once didn't write in a journal at all, right? And now they're bringing up journalism, journaling as a habit. So where you're going, they have journals. It's a part of the program. They write in them weekly, right? So that's great for you. Something that you're already should be doing and used to. Uh, we've got some good journals that are going to be coming out as part of the program, kind of a book that you can write into. It has cool little billisms, if you will, and, and, and cool sayings and motivational stuff on it that's coming. So that's cool. And then talk to your team, right? Have, that sounds like accountability. Hey, this is what I did today. What did you do? This is what I worked on getting better. How did you feel? This is what I did. How did you do, right? Absolutely love that. Okay, a couple more. When pressure is on, what will you remind yourself to stay calm? What will, yeah, what will you remind yourself to stay calm and in control? When the pressure is on, what will you say to yourself to remind yourself that you're in control? Um, that the pressure is on me for a reason. Yeah, like, like, because... It, go ahead. Like they no, trust in me. Okay. Pressure's on you for a reason. They trust in you. Right? What else? Um, I trust in myself during it, too. Like all the work I put in. There it is. Right. And I don't want you to just be things you say. Oh, I don't want you to regurgitate these fancy, cool little sayings to me. Right. Like I believe in myself and I'll give myself positive self-talk. I love that you're listening to me, but I want to make sure that you truly believe this. stuff. Right. That you're truly like, yes, if I do this and, and, and I know you are and you're trying it and you're giving it your best effort. And I think some of these things have helped you get through the end of the summer, <laughs> you know, without. Uh, you know, go and cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, right? Um, and you did, and you did a great job and you're stronger and you're better and you're moving forward and life is good. All right, how will you handle tough situations or games without letting them shake your confidence? What are we going to do when things don't go our way, right? What are we going to do in those moments when things don't go the way that we want them to? Um, probably talk to Peyton 
because we've been talking a lot lately, like even if we have like rough days. Okay. Um, so you're really you're really leaning on that friend source in this in this instance. Okay. Yeah. And then like if I have a rough day, the next day I can like really think about it and work on maybe what I had a rough time doing. Right. Right. Take it to the lab the next day. Right. This is what I struggled with today. This is what I'm making myself great at tomorrow. I love that. That's that's that is that is that is great, great work, right? I'm not gonna let it defeat me. I'm not gonna let it hold me back. I'm gonna attack it head on and I'm gonna go get it for everything that it's trying to get me for. Because life's an exchange, right? What you want, it's gonna make you sacrifice something, whether it's time, whether it's effort, whether it's money, whether it's you know, whatever it is, if you want something, there's an exchange in order for you to get it, right? So continue to exchange good positive stuff for that negative stuff so that we can get rid of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. I don't want you to answer this one here. What is your personal mantra or affirmation for the season? So when you get to the worksheet or you have some time, I want you to really think about this. Who is O? What is she going to say to herself that no one else can tell her so that she knows internally she's better than any one situation. What is your, like for me, it's 60 for me, 60 minutes a day. I know as long as I get that, I'm good to go and I can be positive and change the world. So I say hashtag 60 for me every five minutes, right? It's all over the place, right? If you see Coach Bill, you know you're going to hear something about 60 minutes somewhere, right? So what is O's personal mantra? What is her brand? What is her message to the world and in the future that she's going to let the world know that she's different, she's great, nothing's going to get in her way, and she's here to kill it in every regard. So I want you to think about that and then write that down when you're ready for it, and we'll continue to talk about it. But I want to know who is O? Who is she as a catcher? Who is she as a person? When I hear this, it instantly makes me think of her. So whatever that is, right? You tell me what that is. And, and that might take you five minutes. That might take you some time, right? But I want you to really start thinking about what is my personal mantra? What is the personal thing that I say to myself that I know I'm going to be okay? How do I get myself out of the deepest, darkest place if I ever end up there? Does that make sense? Yeah. Love it. All right, a couple more. Reflection, committing to the journey. Reflect on a time when you weren't fully committed, when you were not fully committed. What held you back and what did you learn? Tell me about a time, oh, where you weren't fully committed into something. Um, Probably not that long ago. Like maybe, wait, maybe last fall season. Like okay. I would be like, I'm going to work out today, but then I never did it. And I was like, I just didn't have time, but I, like, I should have made time to do that because okay. it only helps me get better. Right? So you put off working out. You weren't all in. Got it. So what kept you from being all in in that workout? Just myself. Like, I don't know. I just didn't want to do it. But now, like, that's something <laughs> I want to do every day. I want to get better. Right. I got it. Right. And listen, there'll be days where you still wake up and you're just like, uh... And those are the days that you have to decide if greatness is for you. Those are the days that you have to find out if you're a person who settles and tomorrow is okay. Or if greatness is chasing you and something you're going after every single day. Now, if you've got a scheduled rest day, okay, you've got a scheduled rest day. My greatness means I'm resting today. That's how I'm being great. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right? There's nothing wrong with a personal day. There's nothing wrong with going to a birthday party. There's nothing wrong with going shopping with the girls. There's nothing wrong with going to the beach. There's nothing wrong with doing any of that stuff. You're 14 years old. And it's not all going to be school and work, school and work, school and work. You should be doing other things outside of softball. You should be doing other things outside of the game in a structured work environment. You should just still be being 14, 15, and 16 years old and doing stupid stuff and eating bowls of ice cream until 2 o'clock in the morning, you know? Those things are still supposed to happen. Uh, but when it's time to engage and it's time to be locked in, be locked in. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, cool. How are you going to ensure, there you go, that you are working for this program, so that you have the mindset that I talk about every day, 60 minutes a day to get better, to engage, to give it absolutely everything you got. So how are you going to ensure that over this season, no one slows down Oh, Like, 
remind myself that I need to put this work in if I want to become like a D1 athlete or whatever college I go to. Like sure. remind myself what I want to do in the future and like the work I'm going to have to put in believing myself every day and not giving up on that goal. Got it. Right. Now, listen, I don't know where you're going to end up. Right. I say that all the time. I don't know what level you're going to play at, but do you want to play division one ball? Yes. Okay. Then that's what you're going to talk about or wherever I end up is now out of our vocabulary. Okay. Right. I'm done with that. Right. Because if that's what you want to do, then that's the goal. There's no, or there's no, but there's no way for me out of that goal. If I give it everything I have and I don't achieve that goal. Okay. But along the way, there was no other thought process in my head of not achieving that goal. I did not give myself an excuse or a way out from achieving that goal, right? So, yeah. yes, will you play Division One ball? I have no idea. That's up to you, DNA, work ethic, time, opportunity, the landscape four years from now when you actually go to college, things change every day. But in your mindset, in this lesson as my student right now, if that's what you want to do, that's the goal. That's where we're going. That's the thought process. And that's what you're spending your time focused on right now. Now, we're still going to engage other schools. We're still going to engage other camps. We're still going to, you know me, five from this level, five from this level, five from this level, five from this level. You're still going to engage 25 different schools over the next couple of years until we figure out where you're going to go. And that's up to the system, your talent level, your communication. All of those things will be determined well outside of this video lesson, right? But if we're shooting for it, then that's all we're shooting for. Because anything else, well, that's not what we're engaged in. What's on your mind? Anything else going on? Everything else good? Yeah. How do you feel about a lesson like this? Do you feel like this was helpful? Yeah, I like it. Cool. All right. Now, for you, uh, you know, it's a, it's a new day. It's a new opportunity. Uh, it's, it's back to you know, uh, work, uh, summer is over. The little break is, is over. We're now a high school freshman. We're going to have, I'm assuming fall ball. We're going to have different activities. We're going to have spring ball. Uh, we, we've got a fall schedule coming up. So I need you to get your schedule and, and start sending your emails and, Hey, it's Olivia. And this is where I'm at. And this is what I'm doing. And this is my fall schedule. And, you know, if you have any camps, please keep me in the loop and let me know. And, and now it's time to get our flyer done and get our video, excuse me, get our video done and get our stuff sent to the lady so that I can get your website built. It's time to start getting engaged. It's time to turn it up. It's time to level up. And it's time to really just start chasing all of the dreams that you want. Because we've transitioned from my parents put me in softball and this is their hopes and dreams for me to I'm now 14, 15 years old. I'm a high school student. I can make a lot of my own decisions. I love this game. I want to be great. This is what I'm focused on. And now because of that, I'm making the decision to move forward and go be the best that I can be. That's where we're at, right? Yeah. Love it. All right, man. Well, enjoy it. Go be great. Uh, I, I won't see you tomorrow if you're going to the first practice. But if you're going next week, uh, then I will see you out on the field next week. If not, I'll see you when I see you, and I'll certainly see you a group next week as well. If you got any questions throughout the week, let me know. Dude, I can't tell you how proud I am of you, man. You've had a tough, tough spring, you know? So you had a great spring. You had a great summer, tough towards the end. Uh, you're working hard. You're, you've come so far in the last six months. You're now attacking so many new things between high school, a new team, new adventures, believing in yourself, taking on new opportunities. Oh, you're doing all the right things. You're focused in all the right way. But now we got to turn it up, right? Now we got to turn it up. Now we got to go from just talking about it to being about it, from thinking about it to doing it, from making our thoughts and processes of being great to actually institutionalizing things to make ourselves great by choice with intentional effort every single day. Peace out, Girl Scout. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I'll see you.